organization do you belong to? I am from the Clinket, Haida, and Simpsian tribes from Alaska. Can you tell, we, we talked a little bit about the history of United Indians and how that ties into Daybreak Star and the, the ultimate way that people's lodge. Long story. So just. Well, United Indians of All Tribes Foundation has a really unique and beautiful history for Indian people living in the Seattle area. In 1970, this used to be an active military base called Fort Lawton. Um, it became surplus property in the 70s. United Indians applied for a piece of the property as well as the city of Seattle for Discovery Park. Um, so we both had competing applications. The feds came back, said United Indians and city negotiate and come in with one single application. Um, the city said, why don't we take over the land and then we'll negotiate with you, United Indians, for a piece of property once we have the lease, once we have the land. Um, as a result of that, the Native American community organized and gathered um, and said, we really can't wait for that to happen. We don't know if that will really come true. So they, they organized invasions and occupations and scale defenses of the military base and took on the military and put up teepees and had an encampment here for three months. Um, Jane Fonda joined in that effort. She came to support the Indians. They got support nationwide for the invasion for the city to negotiate with United Indians for land. So the result of that was three months of negotiations. United Indians ended up with a 12 a 99-year renewable lease for an almost 20-acre site here, which is called the Indian Cultural Center site. On that site, there were about five facilities on the site, one being the People's Lodge, the other being an arts and educational center, and that is the Daybreak Star Center is the first facility we've completed on the master plan. And the People's Lodge is the next planned facility. Right now, we've been working on, it's a 30-year plan that started in the 70s. Um, we've actually worked with a, lot, with a lot of city officials. We've went to different sites to find alternative locations. None of those have panned out. Um, we went back to the city in 2001 after we lost Bernie White Bear, who led the invasions and occupations. and was really committed to seeing the People's Lodge built um, because we had been stalled in the legal system. So we went back to the city and said, we need to resolve this. We need to have a place to have the People's Lodge. So we went again around the city looking for alternative locations. The city and United Indians both agreed there were no alternative sites. And we want to and we need to bring all of the components back to our site, which was a lease agreement for the Indian Cultural Center. So right now where we're at is we are, we negotiated an agreement with the city of Seattle in 2001, another agreement, um, which would help us resolve the legal issue, which we redesigned the People's Lodge to make better use of the space and are working with the neighboring community to see if we can resolve some of the issues they're concerned about. So we're looking at a couple more years for groundbreaking. But now things are, are working pretty well with the community. Well, there definitely are some issues we're still working on. We're in settlement agreement discussions with them. Expect to have an agreement um, within the next three to six months. When did you approach the mayor's office and what kind of role did, did you originally think that they were going to have in, in mediating? Did they mediate between the community? They have been serving as mediators throughout the past two years. Um, and they really stepped up to the plate in serving the role that we wanted them to be, which was we want 
to resolve the issues because we need to have the People's Lodge for our community. Um, so they stepped up and have worked with us closely on resolving issues we need to, but also we're working with the community litigants. And this, apparently, you were impressed enough by the effort that they put forth that you wanted to commission the song. Can you tell me um, how you came up with that idea? Well, um, we really wanted to do something to show our appreciation because it had been a long-standing no mayor would actually step up and we, we were stuck for so long. Um, but this mayor actually stepped up and put effort into making, helping us resolve the issues. So the idea came up to show appreciation, um, to show honor and respect for the work that we'd accomplished together. So it was more in the spirit of cooperation, the spirit of working together to find workable solutions. So the commitment, the dedication, um, just trying to come up with something that would carry on, would not just, to give a blanket. You can give a blanket and then it's given and it's gone, but something that the mayor's office would have, that the Indian community would have, that would continue on from mayor to mayor and from generation to generation to honor the spirit and the spirit of cooperation and the spirit of working together to find workable solutions. And you called Arlen to ask if it was to give his advice on this. And how did you decide to have him commission? How did you decide to commission Arlen for the song? Um, Arlie is a really good role model in the Seattle Indian community and I had known him personally from powwows and whatnot. Um, and a song is really different from my culture so I wanted to make sure it would be okay with other cultures that, that we don't offend any other cultures within the Native American community because they all are so diverse. There's not one right one or one wrong one. They're all different, but you have to show respect for each one of them. So calling him to see if it was appropriate was the first thing I did. Um, but just his having Arlie write the song because of his involvement in the community and personal relationships. Do you think that, um, okay, now the song has been written what do you think about the, ha having the mayor's office be the keeper of the song? Can you write a song, can you have a song commissioned as an honor song for somebody and then have them be the keeper of it too? Is that how that ordinarily works? I don't know the answer to that. Is, can you, like if you wrote a song for an individual, um, would they necessarily always be the keeper of the song too? Um, my experience is that if you were made you think that you, you know, how, they, how the songs normally work for your culture as compared to, say, Arlen's? Um, I've just been involved with um, learning my songs and dances from, for about five years now. And they're really about telling family stories, about telling stories from way back when you lived in the villages and the experiences you had. So we do a lot of storytelling. Um, there are some family songs. Individuals write songs. There aren't a lot that come back from history because they were all lost. Um, my grandparents were not allowed to speak their language, so therefore my mother doesn't know how. So we're, le we're relearning our songs and rewriting our songs so that we, act, we have something to carry on and to give down to our children. Um, 
in my culture, it's, it's really storytelling, and we have honor songs and family songs. What is your yeah, hope? Sorry, you know what that was? Uh, well, songs for Indian. Oh, okay, I'm ready. Okay. Oh, sorry, go. That's all right. Songs for Indian people and Indian tribes all across the United States and up in Alaska are really different and unique. And they're all really spiritual to individuals that sing them or to groups that sing them. Um, so to have a song written, composed for the mayor's office was really, I don't know what to say. Okay, where was I? Well, you were talking about the importance of songs. Start over the whole thing? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you want to, so you can keep your train of thought. Okay. Um, songs across the United States and up in Alaska are really unique to each individual or each Indian tribe, and the culture has expressed songs in many different ways. Um, it's a lot has to do with honor and respect and wanting to, specifically in my culture, it's wanting to tell stories and to share your history and your culture with families and each other. Um, we share songs back and forth. Um, there are Tlingit people that have different dialects and language, and that's a tribe from Alaska. Haida people. And when we have gatherings, we'll share the songs to honor each other, to share with each other. Um, and it's really gathering of people together. So the song for the mayor is what we wanted to present and to share was we can come together as communities. We can come together to honor each other and show respect and appreciation for the community that we all live in. And then when you, but you weren't sure at first whether the mayor's office would understand this, this, this gesture. <laughs> no, it's, it's hard to know how people are going to receive things. Um, and it was a risk on United Indians' part and my part to not know how it would be received from not only the Indian community, but from the mayor's office. Um, but it turned out to be a really wonderful experience. I know that the mayor's office was touched, and we, the song was absolutely beautiful, and we're really happy that it turned out, and it, or being able to share it with everyone. Did you have a vision about how the song might be used throughout the, the next several years? Or what kinds of occasions? Well, the song um, was really from the Indian community and presented to the mayor's office. What I want it to be used for is a, a celebration of working together for the new mayor we'd like to present for that so that each mayor knows about the song each mayor understands the song and what it was for the spirit of cooperation um, and that the Indian community really owns the song and can feel a connection to it from my generation to the next generation that it's always a, a community song for Seattle I think I can read, okay, just start? Yeah, go ahead, you better go. Okay. 
Um, the first time that we used the song, the mayor's office song, was to honor Mayor Paul Schell before he left office um, in honor of the work that we'd accomplished. It was a ceremony where we invited the Native American community, we invited city officials, we invited um, our neighboring community, some of the, the army guys came down to join us in the celebration. Um, and it was a time to honor and respect. And part of it is an old tradition in where you're gifting someone for the Indian, Indian cultures across the United States. It's really a sign of wealth for Indian people is how much you can give away, not how much you can accumulate, but how you give away, how you show respect to other people. So the song and the day of that was sharing that with the community, sharing it with the mayor. Um, we also were able to give him some gifts of appreciation. Um, on that day, before we presented him with the song, uh, we did the song and it was really wonderful. He appreciated it. it the community appreciated it. And um, we ended the day doing a round dance with the mayor joining all of us in the community. And it turned out to be really nice. Um, it was the first time the song was released. The next time we plan to do it with the new mayor, which will be Greg Nichols. We haven't had the opportunity to do it yet. I hope to have Mr. Nichols here for an event and also um, when we sign an agreement with the neighboring community groups and the city of Seattle to move forward on the People's Lodge project, we will also be having this song sung.